everybody. Welcome to all of you to come out to support our rally today. It has been organised by the Canterbury and Whitsubble branch of South East Kent Palestine Solidarity Campaign. Since we last gathered together here, there has been a dangerous escalation in the war on Gaza. Following an Israeli attack on its embassy in Damascus, which killed 16 Iranians, including a senior general, Iran retaliated by firing missiles at Israel last weekend. Now, US President Joe Biden and British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak are suddenly urging Israel to restrain itself in retaliation on Iran. Nevertheless, Israel ignored them and launched a missile attack on, Israel, on Iran yesterday, narrowly missing its nuclear facilities in Isfahan. But when do we ever hear Biden, Sunak, or the leader of the opposition, Keir Starmer, urge Israel to restrain and desist from its plausibly genocidal attacks on Palestinians? Okay, so they tell Israel to avoid killing civilians, but they know this will not happen and refuse to stop arms exports to Israel that could end the bombing now. The Palestine Solidarity Campaign point out that the attack on the Iranian embassy came at a moment when Israel was under increasing national pressure, international pressure. It is clear that Israel intended to provoke an Iranian response with the hope that this would bolster Western support and allow it to consider to con allow it to continue its genocidal assault under the fog of a wider war. Therefore, we must not be distracted and keep our focus on Gaza. The world must continue to demand an end to Israel's genocide in Gaza to avert the threat of a catastrophic war and ensure peace throughout the Middle East. But in the meantime, Israel continues to kill Palestinians and starve them to death in a manufactured famine. It is still planning a major ground offensive on Rafa, which will cause further unimaginable death and destruction. And Israeli settlers continue to attack and kill Palestinians in the West Bank. Nevertheless, Biden continues his unwavering support of Israel and Sunak and Starba follow suit. However, the PSC is urging us to continue our pressure on the government to back an immediate ceasefire to take all available measures to ensure safe access to and delivery of the essentials of existence and medical assistance to Palestinians in Gaza, including immediate reinstatement of funding to UNRWA and finally to abandon its pernicious anti-boycott bill which goes against Britain's obligations under international law and seeks to deny Palestinians the right to call for peaceful mechanisms including boycott and divestment and to hold Israel to account for violating their rights. Today we're here to protest against Barclays which bankrolls the Israeli genocide. It invests one billion pounds in companies arming Israeli apartheid, such, such as Instro Helvet, an arms manufacturer in Sandwich, Kent. So we ask you to join our third mass boycott of Barclays by pledging to close your account on the 9th of May to let it know that you will not bank with it while it enables genocide. While we must hold our government to account for its shameful response to the war on Gaza, we should also be calling on our local political representatives to speak out. Councillors across the UK have made their voices heard, but our local councillors have remained almost entirely silent. It is time to speak out for an immediate and lasting ceasefire and an end to occupation. So I ask you all to sign the petition that is circulating among you here today 
which requires Canterbury City Council to debate the war on Gaza and support the International Court of Justice by demanding an immediate halt to the Israeli actions which are plausibly genocidal. The Council, as a matter of extreme urgency, must take all possible measures to ensure that it is not, even inadvertently, in support of this genocide. The serious disruption prevention orders that the government plans to bring in will likely impact public protests. Therefore, it is more important than ever to have the support of Canterbury City Council for our local demonstrations. So please sign the petition. I will conclude this introduction uh, with a poem from the Palestinian poet Mohammed al Khur. Tonight, we die as a family. At the hospital, the nurse is startled. A surprise visitor, her husband's corpse on a stretcher. He arrived in the back seat of a taxi, a makeshift hearse. There are not enough ambulances in Gaza and more than enough death. She is livid. Men never listen. I told you to wait till after my shift. I need to tend the wounded first. I told you tonight. We die as a family. We were supposed to die as a family. Thank you. I will now hand over to, uh, to Jean to introduce our valued speakers. Thank you, Mary. And welcome everyone who's come here. A welcome, big welcome to South East Palestine Solidarity Committee and a special welcome to the Palestinian people who are here. I have the pleasure of introducing some excellent speakers. But first, first, I have to let you know that our first speaker, Diane Langford, founder member of Palestine Solidarity Campaign, an LGBT elder, has had to cancel speaking at short notice due to the terminal illness of a close family member. Having dedicated much of her adult life to fighting for the Palestinians, Diane would really have wanted to be here today. We miss you, Diane, and send you all our love at what is a dreadful time for you. Before we start, besides signing the petition Mary has told you about, please do sign up for email updates of future PSC actions. Our first speaker today was going to be Elaine Hefferman, who's been delayed. We hope she'll be able to come before the end. So we will hand over to Nick Den, where are you, Nick? Who was running the stall and is going to talk about the Israeli aspect. Oh, sorry, sorry. The apartheid aspect of Israeli politics. Thank you. Yes, I, I just worked out uh, a little while ago, uh, 37 years ago, I mean, I speak up. Speak up. Uh, 37 years ago, I used to stand outside Barclays as part of the anti-apartheid movement, bringing attention to the uh, support for apartheid that Barclays was giving to South African apartheid. And, and uh, strangely, when, when they disinvested from uh, 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 South Africa, I... Uh, then opened up an account. I thought, I thought I would congratulate them on their wise move to move away from uh, the apartheid. And I opened up an account, and, I, and I've, I've had that account for the last 37 years. But unfortunately, I've, I've had to remove my account. And, and that's very easy to do. As Mary said, the uh, PSC is inviting people to move on, on May the 9th. It's incredibly easy to even tell them that that's the day that you want to move, and that's what I've done. So I'll be moving my account from Barclays uh, on the 9th of May, and I urge anybody else who's a Barclays customer to do the same. But, uh, but I want... Can't remember, can't remember, can't remember, can't remember. 
But, but I wanted to uh, say a few things. Uh, just, just about why, why we recognise that Israel is an apartheid regime. And, and it most certainly is. And, and uh, this information comes from a uh, 2022 Amnesty International report, which anybody can have a look at online. But, um, so in 1948, 800,000 Palestinians were displaced from Palest uh, areas of Palestine to create the state of Israel. And today, there's 6 million Palestinian refugees who are still living as refugees as a consequence of that. 3.4 million of them are living in refugee camps outside of Palestine, whereas 2 million live in Jerusalem, although they only live on 3% of the land of Jerusalem. 2 million people, sorry, uh, 3 million people live in the West Bank. And again, uh, because of Israeli settlers, the uh, Palestinians only occupy 40% of, of the West Bank land, but 60% of that has now been settled by, by Israeli settlers. 2 million, as we know, are living in Gaza. So, it's a, so Palestinians have a fragmented society and, and uh, suffering from a disposition of land has become a, a, the uh, usual form. Systematic oppression and denial of rights. One big example of that is the ID system. In, in Israel, if you're a, a, a Jewish a Israeli, you, can, you just have one uh, ID card. For Palestinians, there are four different ID cards. And depending on which, which card you carry, uh, influences how much rights and access you have. Uh, you, if, if you have a green uh, uh, ID card, then you're living under mo uh, military rule, either in occupied West Bank or in Gaza. You can, but both those are different, um, different ID cards. If you, if you have a green Gaza ID card, then you don't have any rights to, to move out of Gaza. You have to live in Gaza. And as, as we know, uh, Israel controls access to all uh, resources into Gaza. 90% of uh, people living in Gaza have no access to safe drinking water. 47% are unemployed. 56% are living in poverty. And that's the that's situation in 2022. Of course, uh, many of them are not living anymore, and where they are, everybody's living in poverty because there is nothing but rubble there. If you have a green uh, West Bank car, then, then you, you're able to uh, move around the, the West Bank but there's an apartheid wall that separates you from, from uh, different parts of your family and from the more uh, uh, salubrious parts of the West Bank which have been annexed by uh, the Israelis. 80% in occupied uh, West Bank. Uh, if, if, if you get picked up, if you get deported to Gaza from uh, the West Bank, and once you're in Gaza, you're not there. There are separate roads for settlers of the Palestinians, permits to travel. If you have a blue I, uh, ID card, then you, then you're able to live in uh, East Jerusalem. You have, have the right to travel. <laughs> you can vote. But you can't leave, you can't leave and, and you can travel around, but if you leave for too long then you will lose your residency. Your residency will be revoked. And 15,000 Palestinians in East Jerusalem oh, have had their uh, residency. So, 1.3 million uh, Palestinians are living in Israel. They're living in, in the Israeli uh, state, but they're barred from 70% of Israeli towns. They can vote, but they're systematically discriminated against. In 2002, Israel introduced a law prohibiting family unification for family members holding different IDs. So you can't, you can't even be uh, one with your family. Israel provides building permits across Israel in occupied territories, but denies Palestinians the right to build their own homes and destroys homes that are built without a permit. In 2020, in the West Bank, 18 Palestinian homes, homes and buildings were destroyed every week, whilst 1,094 building permits were, were, were granted for Israeli settlers and just one permit was granted for a Palestinian building. So, so things are very different for, for the Israelis and the Palestinians in that country. And it is quite rightly a part of regime. I'm, I'm going to leave Barclays and I would urge and encourage anybody else to do something.
I haven't convinced you, then I just want to share a couple of thoughts from, from uh, three, three different, fairly well-known people. The first, first is Nelson Mandela, who, who, who was very aware of, of the apartheid nature of uh, uh, Israel and said this, we know too well that without our, our freedom is incomplete without the freedom of the Palestinians. Desmond Tutu, uh, and there's a few other quotes from him over there, but he said, I know firsthand what that Israel has created in the past reality within the borders of the occupation. Parallels to my own beloved country have painfully sharp scars. And the last person is Benjamin Netanyahu, who wrote this in 2002. Israel is not a state for all of its citizens, but the nation state of the Jewish people and only them. Israel is an apartheid state and it needs to change. Thank you, Nick. Let's get some chanting going. Free, free! Free, free! Free, free! From the river to the sea! Palestine will be free! From the river to the sea! Palestine will be free! Stop killing children! Stop killing children! Stop killing children! Stop killing children! One, two, three, four! Occupation no more! Five, six, seven, eight! Israel is a terror state! One, two, three, four! Occupation no more! Five, six, seven, eight! Israel is a terror state! Free, free! Palestine! Free, free! Palestine! Free, free! Palestine! In our thousands, in our millions, we are all Palestinians! So now, um, after those important facts that Nick gave us, which you do not see reported in mainstream media, am I speaking loud enough? Um, I want to welcome Setra Ibrahami, who is a poet, and she will tell you about a poetry event that um, South East Kent PSC are organising today. Welcome, Setra. Hello, thank you for having me read. I'll just get my material up one second. Can everyone hear me okay? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, as Jean said, I am a poet and I have read my own poetry at um, Palestine Solidarity Campaign events before, but I thought what's more important than my own poetry is actual Palestinian voices, so that's what I'm going to be sharing with you today. You might know some of these poems, but um, they're very shareable, they're very listenable, they're very relatable, and I'd like to read some more of them <laughs> for you today. So, this one is called I Grant You Refuge. It's by a poet, novelist, and teacher, Hiba Abu Nada. Refuge was written on October 10th and is among the last pieces she composed before being martyred by an Israeli airstrike on October 20th. I grant you refuge. I grant you refuge in invocation and prayer. I bless this neighborhood and the minaret to guard them from the rocket. From the moment it is the general's command until it becomes a raid. I grant you and the little ones refuge. The little ones who change the rocket's course before it lands with their smiles. Two, I grant you and the little ones refuge. The little ones now asleep like chicks in a nest. They don't walk in their sleep towards dreams. They know death lurks outside the house. Their mother's tears are now doves following them, trailing behind every coffin. Three, I grant the father's refuge the little one's father who holds the house upright when it tilts after the bombs. He implores the moment of death. Have mercy, spare me a little while. For their sake, I've learned to love my life. Grant them a death as beautiful as they are. Four, I grant you refuge from hurt and death, refuge in the glory of our siege, here in the belly of the whale. Our streets exalt God with every bomb. They pray for the mosques and the houses, and every time the bombing begins in the north, our supplications rise in the south. Five, I grant you refuge from hurt and suffering. With words of sacred scripture, 
I shield the oranges from the sting of phosphorus and the shades of cloud from the smog. I grant you refuge in knowing the dust will clear and they who fell in love and died together will one day laugh. Thank you. It starts at 7 30 St Peter's Church, the Peter's Methodist Church in Canterbury, and it's poetry and traditional music featuring Ant Anthony Anaxaguro, who's one of the leading national voices for Palestine Solidarity at the moment, Barry Fentiman Paul, yes. Maggie Harris, and Zita Holborn, presented by myself with music by Hanin and Hatem Kiwan, and it's also going to be live streamed. It's five pounds per door, and all proceeds go to medical aid for Palestinians. So if you can attend, that would be brilliant. Thank you for listening to me today. Thank you for coming and Free Palestine. Free Palestine. Thank you so much, Sandra. Um, I'm looking really looking forward to this event. Um, I think one of the ways that you can kill a people is by annihilating their culture. And that's why we have to keep putting on cultural events as well as rallies like this. Um, so, Hold on one sec. We were at this point going to welcome Dr. Mo actually, the works of the law school at the University of Kansas. It's going to take us through the intricacies of new government legislation, the serious disruption prevention orders, which Mary mentioned at the start, and aim to limit our powers of protest. Sadly, Mo, like many at the moment, is unwell, so we can only wish him a speedy recovery. So, now, we are waiting for Dr. Sinan from the Canterbury Mosque to arrive, um, who had been misinformed about the time the start of this event. So, I would like to welcome Sebastian Locke, um, who is... Uh, you around, Sebastian? Oh, yeah, okay. Sebastian is a fairly new member of Palestine Solidarity Campaign. And we are pleased to welcome him, as well as quite a few other younger people who have been horrified by the ongoing slaughter and have also become members of PSC. They will be the future of campaigners of Palestine. Excuse me. Welcome, Sebastian. Good afternoon. Supposing you have a loved one living in Bleen, Faversham, or even Herne Bay, Tankerton or Chesterfield, and you had to get a permit to cross a checkpoint to visit them, yeah. imagine you had to apply to Canterbury City Council if anyone has tried to get a parking permit or a blue badge. Imagine that a hundred times plus. Imagine, then, the Canterbury Council has employed a bunch of hate-filling, tr trigger-happy teenagers who have been raised to hate you to police those permits and checkpoints. Imagine, then, but there's a law that says you can't, uh, you can't be away from your home for more than six months, otherwise your home will be taken over by re uh, relatives of Canterbury councillors. Okay, so imagine that your mother is ill and you need to visit. You eventually succeed in getting a permit. You go to Lee, but when you attempt to return via the checkpoint, your permit is refused. It takes over six months to sort it out. By now, your home has been occupied by a bunch of settlers from another part of the country, or from New York, or London, Russia, or Ukraine, or even from Peru. These conditions are everyday life for Palestinians at the best of times in the West Bank. Palestinians can only meet people from Gaza if they go abroad and meet them there. But what right does Israel act as gatekeeper over another people? What can we do? There's a lot going on in Kent that we have a responsibility to get involved with. We can write to the Archbishop. A few words from him can save lives. We can apply to the universities and pressure them to get the apartheid off of our campuses. Council and MPs, Rosie Duffield, said she was proud of the Balfour Declaration, handing over Palestine to the Zionists. Pension fund investments. Kent County Council is enormous. We must have many members of their, of their pension fund in our footprint. We unite across Kent to pack out all the arms factories. We will go to Sandwich, most likely on May the 11th. Oh, sorry. Revive Kent Kent's radical history and join the PSC. Decolonize Palestine, free Sudan and the Congo. Stop the killing, stop the crime. 
bring Palestine. Thank you so much, Sebastian. It's a pure chance now would be a good thing. Free, free Palestine. 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 Stop bombing children. Stop bombing children. Stop bombing children. Stop bombing children. Two, four, six, eight. Israel is a terrorist state. One, three, God, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Free, free Palestine. Free, free Palestine. Free, free Palestine. One, two, three, four. Occupation, no more. Five, six, seven, eight. Israel is a terrorist state. Free, free Palestine. Free, free Palestine. From the river to the sea. Palestine will be free. From the river to the sea. Palestine will be free. One, two, three, four. Occupation, no more. Five, six, seven, eight. Israel is a terrorist state. Free, free Palestine. Thank you for rescuing me there when my man failed me. Um, next we have Ian Jasper speaking. Ian is um, chair of the Canterbury and Whitstable Stop the War. Stop the War partners with PSC, one of a number of, number of organisations to do so. Welcome, Ian. I've been told that I must keep the microphone close to my mouth. So if you can't hear me or you stop hearing me, please shout and uh, I'm speaking today on behalf of Canterbury and Whitstable Stop the War. Throughout this campaign, Stop the War nationally and the PSC nationally and in different regions around the country have worked together very closely. And I think you all probably know that most of the national demonstrations, if not all of them, have been jointly organised by a committee which includes Palestine Solidarity Campaign and Stop the War. Yeah? Like that? Yeah. Thank you. All right. Um, Canterbury and Whitstable Stop the War is part of a national campaign. Um, and it, we are here today because one of the things we would like is for people locally who are involved in PSC or are supporting us in our uh, action today about Gaza, if you would please come and talk to us about working with us in Stop the War going into the future as well. Um, right. Obviously today the focus is on Gaza and on the wider issues of Palestine, but I think it's very important that we also have the perspective of stop the war on this as well because what is happening in Gaza today is actually part of an overall campaign and I think this if you have to understand this to understand why it appears that America is supposedly saying that they don't want a continuation of the genocide in Gaza but at the same time they are facilitating it and we need to understand that what is actually happening is that the United States, Britain, and the other Western powers are doing everything they can and will do anything they can to maintain their control over the Middle Eastern region and indeed, as far as they can, the wider world. That is why you would notice that once Iran shows that it's more powerful than the United States and the British thought, they start to talk in an almost conciliatory way to Iran. Because really, believe it or not, for all the past rhetoric, it is not inconceivable that in the future, the United States will seek an accommodation with the Iranian regime, which would still allow the Western powers to extend their power in the Middle East, to keep their power in the Middle East. And that is what is the name of the game. At the moment, the United States has been putting all its eggs in the Israeli basket and supporting the genocide in Gaza and, of course, the, the destruction of the Palestinians throughout the historic land of Palestine. Okay. Um, I would also like to say that we need to also look at 
what our leaders say when they say that there is a possible genocide in Gaza or that there will possibly be starvation or that we are headed towards starvation of the Palestinians of Gaza. Our British parliamentarians who are talking in these terms know full well that the genocide is already taking place and that starvation is already extremely widespread. They know that Israel has destroyed all of the medical facilities in Gaza with the intention of making it completely uninhabitable for Palestinians. They know all of this, but they continue, I'm sorry to say it, in the British tradition of pretending that this is not that it will happen and that we're doing everything we can to stop it happening, which is completely and totally untrue. And I would like to say that when it comes to election times, I would ask anyone, do you want to support parties that have supported genocide and continue to support genocide? No! No! All right, I think that is all that I wanted to say today, except the last thing to point out, again, from Stop the War, was something that I pointed out last week, but it is an important thing because I think most people don't realise that there is now an arm of war stretching from the Mediterranean into and possibly beyond the borders of China. An arc of war instigated by Western powers. Just think of it. We have Palestine, with the Israelis declaring war on all Palestinian people. We have a war with the Israelis declaring war on Lebanon. We have ISIS in Syria. And the, uh, uh, anyone who needs to think that, uh, sorry, there's no way to consider ISIS today as anything other than an American, a US cat's paw in the Middle East. Beyond Syria, Iraq, a country they have already destroyed with wars. Beyond that, we go into Afghanistan, and then on the far end of that, Afghanistan, of course, is the China border. We could also think about the war in Ukraine, yeah, and the possibilities of war in the Caucasus ever present. Yeah? And what you begin to see is thousands of square miles, many thousands of square miles of countries ravaged by wars which are aided and abetted and instigated by our own government. I have a well, um, that's all I wish to say today and I think I'll hand it back to That's a good contribution <laughs> Those two women over there. Those two women with the free, camera. Free, Palestine. Free, free, Palestine. Free, free, Palestine. One, two, three, four. Occupation no more. One, two, three, four. Down with it, Five, six, seven, eight. Israel is a terrorist state. Five, six, seven, eight. Israel is a terrorist state. From the river to the sea. Palestine will be free. From the river to the sea. Palestine will be free. One, two, three, four. Occupation no more. Five, six, seven, eight. Israel is a terrorist state. Free, free. Palestine. Free, free. Palestine. Free, free. Palestine. In our thousands, in our millions, we, we are all Palestinians. In our, in our thousands, in our millions, we, we are all Palestinians. Okay, brilliant. Um, now I have a really special pleasure in welcoming Dr. Sinan from the Canterbury Mosque. Welcome. This is how to do a process for kids. Assalamu alaikum, everybody. Can you all hear me all right? Yes. Assalamu yes. alaikum. A peace greeting to all of you. And peace greeting to the Palestinians especially. You know, they will win. There's no doubt about it. Thanks to the uh, social media, we now actually know what has been happening not only in 1948, when the Israeli state was declared, but even before that. It started much more before that. 
immigrants have been coming from the uh, atrocities committed against the Jewish people in Europe, mainly in Germany and Poland and possibly some other states in the middle of Europe. Now this is nothing to do with the Palestinians, nothing to do with the Arabs, nothing to do with the Muslims. Why was the land of Palestine was given by the British Foreign Minister uh, the Balfour, uh, financed by the Rothschild family, to actually give the, Palest the Palestinian land to the Jewish people? Why was, why was how many people we are told have been killed in the uh, uh, atrocities in Europe? Say six million. If we believe that figure, give or take, we don't know. Now, six million, if we assume that every Jewish family had six people, six people, that's maybe two parents, two children, and two grandparents. Divide six million by six, you get a million. So there must have been at least a million homes in Europe that, for, that belong to uh, Jewish people. What happened to these homes? Who took them over? Why did the Jewish people were sent to Palestine? Now the Jewish, the, it is a Zionist movement. It has nothing to do with Judaism. Many Jewish people, honest people, good people, religious people, have distanced themselves from Palestine and from Zionism. I'll give you the proof. For example, uh, they are targeting in, in Palestine everything. Everybody, everything, even the plants and the homes solid living people children civilians what have the palestinians got not one single tank not one single airplane and on the opposite side you have all the american weapons of mass destruction which they accuse falsely iraq of having and then they destroyed iraq by by by, the, by, the, their, by their weapons of mass destruction. Uh, so WMDs are not weapons of mass destruction, they are Western media deception. Western media deception. They have been telling lies all over. And we, we witness the, the, the lies of the Israelis nowadays. They lessen how many people of their soldiers have been killed, how many have been committing suicide, only two days ago, we heard that about 50 Israeli soldiers have committed suicide because of psychological problems after taking part in the, uh, the genocide in Gaza. Innocent people have been targeted. This shows the failure of the Israeli uh, undefeatable army. Seven months against people who have nothing, not one single airplane, not one single anti-aircraft gun, not one single tank. Seven months, what did the Israelis show? Dead children, dead children. The, the toll so far is 34,000 killed, 34,000. And the injured, double that at least, 77,000 injured. Now when we talk about injured, we're not talking about just injured by a few, by a few bullets or whatever. We are talking about children and few teas. They're their legs have been amputated, their arms have been amputated, they've lost eyes, they, their features have been destroyed. The beautiful young children uh, scarred by this war. What else did the Israelis achieve? Uh, causing uh, famine. famine. Now in, in, the, in the tens of years, decades that we had, famine is striking, for example, countries in Africa, countries in Asia, and everybody calls for help. What do we have now, this modern Israeli Zionist state, they are creating famine. What else did they do? They deprived the people of water, of food. Um, so the Americans, so kindly, they dropped food by airplanes. Instead of telling the Israelis that they should really open the borders. As an occupation force, they are legally supposed to be uh, giving the, the people who they occupy uh, a good way of life. Instead, they are actually tar tar targeting them in all kinds of different ways. So they deprived of water, of food, they destroyed all the water resources in Gaza uh, and around it. They destroyed the, even the, the, wells. the wells. Now people have been digging wells for people deprived of water in all around the world, in Africa, everywhere.
the Israelis destroying the world, of course. You know, what kind of people are they? What kind of people? Now, look at uh, Mr. Netanyahu. He is effectively now the ruler of the world. Who can say no to Mr. Netanyahu? You tell me. Who can say no? All the Western leaders are then going to visit as soon as the uh, 7th of October, the Western leaders all went and bowed to Mr. Netanyahu. Bowed to him, kissing his feet. And the Americans, they say we will always defend Israel, no matter what. Always defending Israel. So they are complicit. Not only that, is it really the Israelis doing this or is it the Americans who are actually doing it? They supply them with all kinds of weapons. Airplanes, tanks, bombs, one-ton bombs. You know what a one-ton bomb means? The weight of an average weight of a family car is about one ton. Just imagine a car falling on top of people, or of us here. What sort of damage? Full of, full of explosives. What sort of damage would it do? And they are targeting tower blocks of people living, families living in flats in tower blocks. And every, they do it, everyone is a massacre. Everyone is a massacre. Every single one they rob is a massacre. They are bombarding Gaza from the air, from the sea, from the land, inside Gaza with their tanks, from the sea with their gunboats and gunships, and the airplanes, all the most sophisticated, most modern airplanes, given freely by America, Britain, France, and everybody else in Europe. Shame. Shame. Shame on them. Shame on them. Now, what, what have we won? We have won the the truth is coming out now. We now know what happened in 1948 and prior to 1948 because the Zionist movement started uh, by Herzl in 1917 and he was planning with all the imperialist powers since then until 19, before 1948 the Jewish people came from Europe into Palestine and they immediately formed, started forming uh, terrorist gangs, terrorist gangs, like the Irgun, which, is, which was headed by Menachem Begin. And they, one of the first acts they did is destroying a whole village of 250 men they killed and, and, and humiliated the women, uh, taking them into, into lorries, uh, naked, into, in, around Palestine to scare the population so that they can leave the country. Well, they're not going to leave. Nobody's going to leave. The people of Gaza are saying always, we are not going to leave. Because when they leave, that's it. You know, they can't, they can't come back. The Israelis are also, uh, the, uh, apart from destroying the water resources, they are actually bombing the, uh, the farming areas, you know, the plants. Free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! One, two, three, four! Occupation, no more! One, two, three, four! Occupation, no more! Five, six, seven, eight! Israel is a terrorist state! Five, six, seven, eight! Israel is a terrorist state! From the river to the sea! Palestine will be free! From the river to the sea! Palestine will be free! In our thousands, in our millions! We are all Palestinians! In our thousands, in our millions! We are all Thank you, and thank you so much, Dr. Sinan, for your, your wonderful words, and so relevant to our situation. Now we're going to conclude, and we've got Hugh Lanning. Um, he's going to um, conclude our event with powerful, relevant words about the ongoing situation, occupation, genocide, a lot. Hugh was General Secretary of the Public and Commercial Services Union, the Labour candidate for Canterbury in 2015 and the former chair of PSC. And throughout all of these posts, he maintained a passionate activism for Palestine. He is currently acting chair of South East Kent Palestinian Solidarity. Welcome, Hugh. Thank you very much and thank you all for being here uh, week after week. Um, apologies, I wasn't at the last event. Uh, not because I wasn't supporting Palestine, but as at another event. And that's one of the great events in Medway, but also across the country. 
And on top of the national demonstrations, which have been the biggest national demonstrations week after week this country has ever seen, I think this is the longest, biggest political mobilisation that I've ever seen in my life. Uh, and that's been going on for some years now, as you can tell. Uh, but we need to keep that going. There's been tens of thousands of Palestinians who've died. And we need to make sure that that is not lost, that that generation hasn't given up their lives in vain. And there's a question that I think we need to ask everybody is, what did you do in the war? It used to be asked about the Second World War. We ought to ask it about the Gaza War. Did you call for a ceasefire? Did you support the secession of arms? Did you support ending the uh, genocide and the famine? Most of our politicians in this country have done nothing. Most of the politicians in this country have done worse than nothing. They have actively supported the actions of Israel. They have become complicit in the genocide that has been taking place. So we're going to have an opportunity politically over the coming months, before, during and after the next general election, to make sure we ask that question of every candidate of every party, what did you do in the war? And don't vote for them if you're not happy with the answer that you get from them. Because most of them have been active supporters of Israel and what's going on. And let's be clear, this has nothing to do with self-defense. Israel is about eliminating and obliterating the Palestinian state as any possibility in the future. We saw the hypocrisy in the UN of the US and Britain, who would ostensibly call for a two-state solution, voting against or abstaining the recognition of Palestine as a country. If they believed in the future of the Palestinian state, they would vote to recognize it now. They would also vote to make sure that we're not arming the Israelis now. And it's not just selling arms to Israel that we need to be careful about. We buy them from them, we finance the war machine, we supply intelligence to them, we work with them through supplies, through our Air Force, through our Navy, and so on. We need to end military cooperation with Israel. But also we need to make sure that we're clear what sort of solution we want. Israel has made a colony of Palestine. It has colonized and settled that country. And we need to make sure our demand is the decolonization of Palestine. That means bringing down the wall. That means getting rid of the settlements, giving back the Palestinians their water, their gas, their land. Those are the sorts of demands that our politicians and that we need to be making. And the solidarity movement, I was talking to Ben Jamal, who's the director of PSC yesterday. They've now got over 700,000 people on their mailing list who they contact regularly. The next national demonstration, which is next Saturday, is going to be going to Hyde Park. And we need to make sure that we fill Hyde Park like we have never done before. There's going to be the opportunities in the Nakba, which is going to come up uh, in May, for another further national demonstration. And the Nakba was commemorating what happened in 1948 and when 700,000 uh, Palestinians were driven off their land. Over a million Palestinians have been driven from their homes in the last six to seven months. So this is not a one-off occasion. This is a continual war that Israel has been fighting against Palestine. And it's our generation here and now that need to make a difference to try and reverse that trend. It cannot live forever that things that were done to the Jews in the past and the excuse for what is being done today. You can't get protection for one people uh, by destroying another, which is what Israel is trying to do today. So let's commit that we'll keep on coming back uh, to boycott Barclays, because what did they do in the war? They financed it. They're putting money into that war. They're making profits out of that war. We need to make sure that we keep the pressure on Barclays, but also we keep the pressure on the British government and the British political parties who are ignoring what is going on. But rest assured, the Palestinians know what you're doing, what is going on. They track and follow on social media and they're grateful for every march, every, dis uh, every demonstration and every level of support. Thank you to Jean and to Mary for organising everything today. Thank you for coming today. But let's also commit that we'll come next 
There's going to be a demonstration in Sandwich uh, to go to the Elbit uh, factory there. We think on the 11th, but keep out for details on that. Support the poetry demonstration. But what you're doing, all your little actions, are building up to a huge political movement. And we are going to make sure that the, there is a ceasefire, that we stop the arms supply, and that there is eventually a free Palestine. Free, free! Palestine! Free, free! Palestine! Free, free! Palestine! Let's just start slowly and get louder. Free, free! Palestine! 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 Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you so much. And you've done my final job for me by mentioning all the upcoming events. So if you actually sign up to South East Ken and the National Palestinian Solidarity Campaign, you'll get notice of all future events as well planned. So I think that's probably all, except just to thank you for coming. Um, brilliant, and see you next time. See you each time. Thank you very much. Woo.